I am addicted to test-driven development, and for a long time I have been wondering if ChatGPT is a good partner for a pair programming session while we apply it. So on this video I will pair with the OpenAI GPT-4 and we will solve a code kata together while practicing TDD. This will be my first attempt of doing TDD with ChatGPT, so I have no idea if he is capable of doing it or not. How will this work? We will solve the Roman numerals kata, but I will make sure that I do not prompt things like Roman numerals convert, so I don't make his life too easy. I will be the navigator, while ChatGPT, the GPT-4 model, will be the driver. What does that mean? It means that I will be giving directions, while GPT-4 will do the typing for us. And let's see how it goes. So first prompt. Hey, let's per program. You will be the driver and I the navigator, so I'm expecting that it knows the pair programming concepts and assumes that, and will be practicing TDD. So I'm saying also that I want to follow the fake it approach. So I, I don't want to see ChatGPT going too fast, okay? I want to go to that model where we go step by step, we don't know the solution yet, so let's take one step at a, at a time. And I'm saying here the tools that we'll be using, C Sharp, tests running on XUnit, and we will use fluent assertions just to have expressive assertion. And now the first requirement. Okay, please return an I when a method receives one as an arc. One extra thing that I'm doing is that I'm doing that daydreaming part, and I'm imagining what I want to use. So I'm telling him, okay, please create a method to, and also expose it under a numbers mappers class. I'm not using the word Romans, Arabic, convert on purpose. Let's see how it goes. Let's take a look into the answer. So here explains the name of the class and also the name of the method. I will use a different naming strategy, but I didn't told that. So that's fine. I could have say, okay, please use a given when then or whatever naming convention that you are using. So, so far so good. Regarding the tests, looks nice using effect, uh, that naming strategy, and now is using the arrange, act, and assert. Nice one. I didn't ask him for that, and that's a good one. There's a class number mappers, as I told him, with the method two, the input and the output, and using fluent assertions perfectly. And let's see how it is the implementation. So, perfect. So, so far, it's just returning the value and the test will be green, obviously. Okay, looks fine. Let's send a new prompt, and I will just tell him, I want a new assertion, two should return double eyes. And here it goes, he's having a new test. I will not do that, but it's okay so far. And on the implementation, okay, use an if. So it's testing both cases and returning. It's perfect for what we have now, we are faking the solution. So let's Ask him another one. Now three should return three eyes. He will have another test for that one. And this part I would not do like this. We'll ask him to refactor this code in a moment. Okay, but besides that, perfectly fine. Whoa, and now is doing what interesting thing. Is assuming that if the number is greater or equal to one and lower than or equal to three, it will create a new string provide the i as a char and the number of entries of that char that you want to see. So this will return the three i's, two i's or one i. That, that's smart. I didn't ask him yet to start doing that, but at this moment I understand why he's already doing that step. So let's bring some complexity. Let's Try this with the number 10. New assertion, 10 should be X. It's adding a new test once again. Once we get into the green state, let's refactor that. I'm curious to see how we'll handle the 10. It keeps the old code and has an if statement for the 10 and returns the X, so works fine. Since we are in the green state, he is saying right here, okay, the test will pass. And that is really interesting that he has the notion that the tests are succeeding. And let's ask him to refactor the test code because ChatGPT is basically creating a new test case for each value that I'm providing. And typically I would do this in a different way. I either keep the assertions in the same test or since I'm using XUnit, my favorite approach is using the inline data and provide it as an argument. Let's refactor the test code. There's a lot of duplication in the test methods. He agrees with me. 
there's a lot of duplication. Let's refactor the test code introducing an helper method. Let's see what, what it means with the helper method. So you create an assert result that does all the logic and now it's creating test per each one. I still don't like this thing. I was expecting more from you, ChatGPT. Let's try to guide him to what I'm expecting to. So let's ask him, what about using parameterized tests? Maybe that way he will use X units, inline data. Okay, a theory perfect inline data is exactly what we want. And here we go, so much better like this one. Let's keep going and send him another one. So 11 is equals to X, Y. Okay, now he updates the inline data. That is the new test case. So awesome that it leaves this comment just for me to see. Makes a lot of sense. Now let's put the two. And the implementation looks a good one because it changed the order since now I need to evaluate the, the bigger numbers first and looks like the one that I would do. This trick of the new string with the shard is not what I will be doing, but it's a smart way to do that. Let's send him another one. The 20 should be XX. That one should be easy for him. So the solution still works. Let me send him a curveball. Since there's a repetition here in the while, and also this idea of doing the string X number of times, it's also kind of a loop, let's say. It's not that way that is implemented, but the logic, the idea is kind of the same. I will ask him if he thinks that there's a almost of duplication in the source code and if we should refactor this thing to see what he will reply. So I will ask him, the while and the new string look like a near duplication to me. What do you think? Should we refactor it? You are right, the pattern that can be refactored to reduce the duplication and improve the code. See how it goes. And he's explaining the way that we will implement it. We will only update the source code implementation. Perfect. It's what we want. And he came up with this interesting implementation. So he extracted a private method, a pent symbol, where he receives the result, so he's using a ref just to keep updating the same string. Then he receives the symbol, so if it's an X or a Y, and the value, and this one is the input number. And here, now he only has one iteration through the numbers. That makes a lot of sense to me. In fact, we are quite close. Let's ask him just two more numbers, the five and the four. You assert five equals to V. He will update the inline data. And now since he went through that solution, he only adds this extra line here for the five. Perfect. Now I will ask him a different value, the four, since the four doesn't match the existing patterns, but I will ask him to first show me that the test is failing to see what it does on that case. Because as someone that is used to use TDD, I need to see my test failing. So let's ask him and see what it does. New assert, four equals to IV, but this time, please show the failing test. Okay, we'll add the new inline data. We'll first run the tests without updating the implementation. Perfect. This is really impressive. Wow, wow. It even show me the expected error method. That's crazy. What? I was not expecting this one. Whoa, whoa, this is incredible. So, whoa, please do the implementation now. Let's try to nudge him to go in a different direction. What do you think about improving the solution with an hash table? That is interesting. He knows now that is a Roman numeral. It's really smart. Okay, so it's defining a dictionary. Oh, he's going too far already. He's implementing more mappings than the ones that I have told him to, to do. And now he implements the typical solution for this type of problem. I, I have to confess, I'm impressed that he knows now from the context, I never written Roman or numeral or room, Roman to numeral conversion, nothing like that. And he concludes that we are handling Roman numerals. That is interesting. But one problem with that is that if we don't keep an eye on that, we may start implementing more things than the ones that we are expected to do. For example, I could be handling another use case and this could lead me in the wrong direction. This is giving me more source code to maintain in the future. That it's not what I want. Even then, I have to confess that it is impressive. So the last thing that I want to do is to export all the source code generated during this session and see if in fact the tests are green. Since in the last message he printed the implementation, let's just ask him to print the test code. 
here it is and cherry on top of the cake let's ask him to generate some .NET CLI command so we create a test project with this source code. Please generate the CLI commands to set up the needed projects. A .NET new SLN, perfect, it even picks a good name. Now it's creating a class library, okay, to have the implementation. And now it's creating the test project with XUnit and installing Fluent Assertions. That is really good. Adding the project, setting the references, it even explains how to run the tests. So this is brilliant. Let me run all these commands offline and I will get back when I have the source code copied into Writer. I created this solution and those projects using all those commands without changing anything on those. Copy the source code into here. Now I have the compiler complaining because of this reference here. So there's something missing here, but we quickly fix that one. It's a problem with namespaces. So nothing special. Now let's run the tests to see if they go well and they succeed. I'm really impressed about it. Not that it is perfect, but if you are paying attention and you know what you want to do, you can nudge him in the right direction. And there are some details on the process that are mind blowing. If you want to see what does it mean to practice TDD without an AI helping you out, make sure you watch this video right here. Please let me know in the comments what to think about this, if you are excited or if you are scared about everything that AI can impact on our craft. I will see you soon. In the meanwhile, keep it simple.